Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for your patience. My apologies for my tardiness. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. My name is Councilmember Stephen Levin. I'm chair of the Council's General Welfare Committee. Uh, this morning we'll be hearing and voting on a pre-considered resolution sponsored by Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito urging Congress to reject proposed reforms to cut funding to SNAP benefits and to reject Congress's efforts to convert this program into a block grant. Um, first, I would like to thank the Speaker for introducing this resolution and her ongoing work in addressing issues related to food security. I'd also like to thank all of the advocates and providers who are our partners in working to address hunger here in New York City, many of whom are here to testify this morning. Before we begin, I want to uh, acknowledge my colleagues who have joined us uh, today, from, uh, members of this committee, all from the Bronx. So the Bronx made it all the, made it down here. No other borough made it down here. Uh, so I uh, want to thank. Councilmembers Vanessa Gibson, Richie Torres, and Fernando Cabrera for being here today. Um, uh, we are here today to discuss Congress's proposed cuts to, uh, to funding for SNAP and efforts to convert the program into a block grant. The Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, otherwise known as SNAP, provides critical food assistance to people struggling to make ends meet and has contributed to the overall reduction in poverty nationwide. In addition, numerous studies have shown that access to SNAP benefits reduces food insecurity for all while also improving health and educational outcomes for children. According to the Food Research and Action Center, SNAP is considered to be one of the most effective forms of economic stimulus because every dollar of SNAP benefits that is spent generates about $1.79 in local economic activity. As of July 2017, Nearly 1.7 million New York City residents receive SNAP benefits, with New York City residents making up more than half of all New York State participants in SNAP. The average SNAP household across the nation receives about $255 a month in SNAP benefits, which amounts to a meager $1.4 per person per meal. In recent years, there have been proposals put forward by Congress and other groups to either cut SNAP funding or convert it into a block grant. This proposal now has increased traction due to President Donald Trump's proposed 2018 budget, which would cut SNAP benefits nationally by $193 billion over 10 years. Under this budget, federal funding for SNAP benefits would be shifted over to the responsibility of the states with the potential to increase New York State's contribution to SNAP by 25 percent by 2023. In addition, SNAP benefits could be cut and stricter eligibility requirements could be set in place. This shift in cost would mean that New York State would have to contribute approximately $1.2 billion a year by 2023 to SNAP benefits. This would most likely cause state officials to reduce benefits, cut other programs to maintain funding, raise taxes or revenues, and or shift costs to New York City and other local bodies. In addition, families that struggle even with the current level of SNAP benefits would be forced into even worse financial hardship and potential negative health outcomes. At a time when levels of food insecurity and financial hardship remain high, SNAP benefits are needed now more than ever. President Trump and Congress, Congress's intention to reduce SNAP benefits would drastically hurt children and families across the nation. We cannot allow this. Representatives and entities across the nation have showed their support for SNAP benefits. Jurisdictions such as the General Assembly of Pennsylvania, the Albany City Council, the Municipality of Anchorage, Alaska, and the Marin County Board of Supervisors, along with the Alask Alaskan Governor Walker, North Dakota Rep State Rep Gretchen uh, Dobrovich, all have been vital in supporting efforts to stop reduction in SNAP benefits. It's clearly a nationwide issue. These bodies and representatives have been on the forefront in writing letters and passing legislation to support SNAP benefits while fighting Congress and the President's motives to reduce these benefits. In passing this resolution, New York City looks to promote other entities and representatives across the nation to pass and support similar legislation that fights efforts to reduce SNAP benefits. We must stand on the side of those that rely on SNAP benefits. Many people are counting off to ensure that they continue to have access to food assistance that they need. We will now hear testimony from advocates, food pantry providers, and clients in regard to SNAP benefits and hear testimony describing the negative effects of a federal decrease in SNAP benefits on both the national and local level. After the testimony, we will be voting on this pre-considered resolution, so I urge my colleagues to vote yes on today's resolution. I'd like to thank the council staff for their work on to prepare for today's hearing, policy analyst Tani Cyrus, Council Andrea Vasquez, and Amir Newshot Finance Analyst. I'd also like to thank my communications director, Ed Paulino, and my chief of staff, Jonathan Boucher.
I would also like to welcome uh, Council Members Barry Gradenchik of Queens and Rafael Salamanca from the Bronx. So Bronx four, Queens one, Brooklyn Manhattan zero. <laughs> um, uh, so first up, we're going to call um, uh, the first panel, Rachel Sabella from the Food Bank of New York, Terry Hubbard, West Side Campaign Against Hunger, and Rashida Latif, West Side Campaign Against Hunger, uh, and Daniel Reyes, New York uh, Common Pantry. Before the So we're actually going to have to vote uh, before we hear the testimony. So, um, but the testimony obviously is, is going to retroactively inform our vote. So, um, so I'm going to ask William Martin uh, uh, to call the role of council members on the committee. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on general welfare, preconsidered resolution. Chair Levin. But I. Cabrera. Aye. Gibson. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Thank you very much, Chair Levin, and to all of my colleagues who are here. I'm really grateful that we have an opportunity to discuss this resolution before the committee. I want to thank our Chair Steve Levin and certainly our Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for their steadfast support in making sure that we collectively work together to take a huge bite out of hunger. Um, to the Food Bank and to Hunger Free America and to all of the advocates who are truly here, thank you, because this City Council has been extremely passionate and aggressive in our approach and our priorities to make sure that food is never a hindrance to the progress of our children and families. And my colleagues in the Bronx and I have taken it a step further, and we have been working with the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to fund health bucks so we can give out $2 coupons to families at green markets and farmers markets and food pantries and soup kitchens to ensure that families have access to fruits and vegetables. We know for many of our families and communities of low income and Im immigrants and um, seniors and those on fixed incomes, we know that it's a challenge for them. And obviously, we want to reduce the cost. We want to reduce the burden as much as we can. Um, and so, unfortunately, I have to step up because I have a public safety hearing at 11 o'clock, but I want to make sure I go on record in making sure all of the advocates know you have a supporter in myself, and I will not only talk the talk, I'll walk the walk, and we'll make sure that we continue to commit money where this council's commitment is to eradicate hunger. Um, the mayor and many others we are going to be announcing the universal free lunch for every student in a public school in this city because we want to make sure we equalize and level the playing field that no child is stigmatized because they simply cannot afford free lunch they cannot afford lunch at all um, so I want to thank Chair Levin I want to thank our speaker thank you for your testimony and even before you submit your testimony I will always vote aye um, and I want to vote aye um, on this resolution before for the committee and thank all of my colleagues for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Gibson. Torres. Gordenchik. I vote briefly. I want to thank uh, the chair for taking up this um, this resolution and uh, it's kind of sad to me, very sad to me. I've had the pleasure of working with many of the advocates in this room uh, and with the chair on feeding people here in this city and. Um, it's really, to me, a great tragedy uh, that, that there are people in this country willing to turn their back, especially on young people uh, who need to eat. We all need to eat. Our health is uh, where it's at. So uh, I am very happy to support this resolution and will continue to work with all of you, our chair, my colleagues, our speaker, our future speaker, um, uh, to fight hunger in this city and to set an example for the rest of the nation. Thank you. I vote aye. Salamanca. Aye. My vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Resolution has been adopted by the committee. Thank you, my colleagues. Okay, and we'll turn it over to the panel now, whoever wants to begin. Sure. 
Good morning. Uh, my name is, can you hear me? My name is Rachel Sabella. I am the Director of Government Relations at Food Bank for New York City. Food Bank is the city's largest major hunger relief organization, and I'm thrilled to be joined on this panel and in the audience by many of our member agencies that are here to testify today. I'm going to be very brief because what's most important is you hear directly from providers and clients on this. Um, but first, I want to thank the City Council for continuing to prioritize hunger. I remember sitting in the Lois King Theater listening to the speaker talk about hunger and her vision to end hunger in New York City. And it is a privilege to work with this council, to work with you, Chair, to work with the members of the committee and the speaker as we work in this battle and to hear this resolution today. SNAP is the first line of defense against hunger. In New York City, 1.7 million residents rely on hunger, rely on SNAP. That's one in five generally on that. In, in SNAP provides more meals to New Yorkers in 10 weeks alone than our entire network is able to do in one year. The current proposed cuts, if they were to be realized, $193 billion over 10 years would have catastrophic events on New York City. Already strained food pantries and soup kitchens would have even more of a reliance on their resources, but more importantly, people would struggle. That cut would mean 45 billion meals lost across the country. Not a million, a billion. And this resolution is one of the first steps in this process. At the end of the month, Food Bank and our network will be traveling to Washington, D.C. Um, to advocate on behalf of SNAP, and we will be giving this resolution to every member of the congressional delegation, and we will be sharing with it with our partners across the state and across the country. So I'm going to stop talking now, but I want to thank you again for this resolution and pass it on, but we are continue to be grateful and want to continue to work with the council in this partnership. Hello. Uh, good morning. I'm Rashida Latif. I'm the advocacy coordinator at Westside Campaign Against Hunger. Uh, we would like to thank Councilmember Stephen Levin, Chair of the General Welfare Committee, for the opportunity to oppose any and all cuts to the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Uh, WISCA would also like to thank City Council, the City Council and Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for consistently prioritizing anti-hunger programs with increases to the Emergency Food Assistance Program and the expansion of universal free school lunch in nearly all New York City public schools. Founded in 1979, Westside Campaign Against Hunger is, is the country's first supermarket-style food pantry, uh, multi-service, and one of the largest emergency food providers in the city. In the last year, we provided nearly 1.5 million pounds of food, which included over 300,000 pounds of fresh fruits and fresh vegetables to nearly 9,000 households. But our customers come to us for more than groceries. WISCA combines access to healthy food with entitlement benefits, job training, and policy advocacy to work in partnership with our customers by emphasizing their right to self-determination and dignity. As the country's first supermarket-style food pantry, we offer three days of food based on a customer's family size in tandem with SNAP, health insurance, screedry, and eviction prevention, to name a few. Um, to not only alleviate hunger, but to alleviate reliance on the emergency food system as a whole. In fiscal year 2017, WISCA enrolled 690 families in SNAP. SNAP has a far greater capacity than emergency food providers to meet the needs of those who are food insecure. The emergency food uh, system was never designed to replace SNAP as the first defense against hunger. SNAP does in two months, or as Rachel Sabella has said, about uh, 10 weeks, what emergency food providers would do in a year, and therefore it plays an irreplaceable role in ending hunger. The 690 families we enrolled in SNAP are a smaller representation of the approximately 1.7 million residents in New York City who rely on SNAP. Any cut in SNAP whatsoever would without a doubt adversely impact New Yorkers in all five boroughs. The proposed White House budget would cut more than $193 billion to SNAP over 10 years. Consequently, the proposed cuts to SNAP would increase demand on emergency food programs like WISCA all across the city. Once again, we'd like to thank the City Council's General Welfare Committee for the opportunity to testify about the need to oppose any and all cuts to SNAP. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Terry Hubbard. Uh, I'm a customer at the Westside Campaign Against Hunger, which is better known as WESCA. I would like to thank Councilman Stephen Levin, and I would like to thank uh, Council Speaker Melissa Mark Beverito 
for fighting for the New Yorkers like myself who are food insecure. By increasing funding for the Emergency Food Assistance Program and expanding universal school, food, uh, school lunch for nearly all of New York City public schools, I became a customer at WISCA six years ago, and I have been volunteering at WISCA for the last four years. I am a SNAP recipient, and with my allotment of $338, it includes my son who also has autism. I live in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, and I travel on Accessoride to go all the way up to West Side Campaign Against Hunger because of the wide variety of fruits and fresh vegetables for me and my son. While being able to access healthy foods and to be helpful to us, just cutting the SNAP benefits, it cannot work because honestly, it's very sufficient. Being an individual with diabetes and a cancer survivor, receiving fresh fruits and vegetables is just important for my survival. I also became a customer representative on the board of directors at the West Side Campaign Against Hunger. Like you, I was elected a representative to the people who depend on my advocacy, which in my case are nearly 9,000 households of WISCA customers, some of whom who are undocumented immigrants from all over New York City. You've learned a little bit about my story, just a tad bit, but there are many others like me. Their lives depend on the access to SNAP. The proposed budget cuts would devastate so many people who depend on SNAP. Emergency food providers are critical in our community as a resource, but they cannot replace the role of SNAP. SNAP plays in increasing access to consistent and healthy meals. From one representative to another, I am equally invested in the fight to reserve SNAP as the first line of defense against hunger. Once again, I would like to thank you and the City Council's General Welfare Committee for the opportunity to testify and oppose the cuts to SNAP. Thank you to the City Council, especially Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito and General Welfare Chair Stephen Levin for continuing to prioritize anti-hunger programs, including three years of increases to the Emergency Food Assistance Program, EFAP, as well as expansion of universal free school lunch in nearly all New York City public schools. My name is Danette Rivera, and I am the Executive Director of Jitter Community Outreach Center, a food pantry located in Jamaica, Queens. For three years, we have been serving over 1,000 men, women, and children every month on a weekly basis. So we see firsthand the hunger crisis going on right in our community. I have joined this panel today proud to call this council not only my New York City Council, but the city council of every single person that receives food assistance from my pantry and across the five boroughs. It is because of your selfless efforts against one of the world's greatest enemies, hunger that thousands of my clients and many more people throughout New York City have food in their stomachs, so thank you. But the fight continues. The proposed White House budget could have a devastating impact on the anti-hunger safety net. The budget proposed a cut of more than $193 billion to SNAP over 10 years, as you already know, which will significantly impact those who use SNAP to put food on the table. Therefore, the need still exists to defend SNAP, which ensures nutrition, health, and hope for 1.7 million New York City residents. We must persist in pleading on behalf of what is imperative, that no human being should go to bed hungry. SNAP is the first line of defense against hunger and must be protected at all costs. Thank you for taking a stand to ensure SNAP is here to stay. Once again, I want to thank the City Council for introducing this resolution. We look forward to working with you to protect SNAP and continue to help New Yorkers. Thank you. Thank you so much to this panel. I, it's one quick question. If, um, if you could maybe describe what you would envision as, if, if cuts like this went through, what it would, what it would mean on a practical day-to-day -day basis um, for the programs that you that you run and that you work in and that you and that you uh, partake in. For myself, um, like many of us already stated, it would be devastating. We wouldn't be able to uh, manage the overflow. Um, I'm open two days a week, and it would mean having having probably to open <laughs> 24/7. 
um, the resources that we have aren't enough. Now, imagine if this was to happen. This is this is insane. It cannot. It cannot. It cannot be happening. It cannot. This cannot be allowed to happen. These cuts will be devastating, not only to us at Westside Campaign Against Hunger. On any given day at Westside Campaign, especially on Wednesdays, we handle anywhere from two to 500 people in one day. We're closed on Tuesdays because that's the day we receive our full deliveries, but in actuality, we have deliveries that are coming in from City Harvest, Food Bank, and uh, Fairway supermarkets because we are in need, and it's a crisis. Not only that, but when these budgets are cut, the proposed budgets, we're looking at the future recipients of West Side Campaign Against Hunger. We're talking about the mass incarceration, those who are coming home, that the, re the revolving door of recidivism will be as higher than ever in United States history. Because when those individuals come to us, how would they suffice on a three-day meal? We only give them enough to survive three days. Could you imagine having that cut in half or none at all? So this does, does a wonderful, well, a devastating impact on all of us, but it's wonderful if we can keep this going, we can enable and stop the recidivism and help those who are in need in our communities. I just want to add very briefly, from a practical standpoint, SNAP benefits generally do not last the month for clients. They tend to run out in the third week. So food pantries and soup kitchens, the last week of the month, are really seeing increases in numbers and increases in people coming. So if the cuts were to happen, then that would mean people, they won't even last a week, that funding, or people would lose those benefits. So the reality is the impact would be absolutely devastating, not only across the city, but across the country. Uh, to echo Rachel, the emergency food system as it exists, exists and is designed specifically to supplement SNAP. So we are the supplement of the supplement. If the, mm -hmm. if the primary supplement SNAP being the first line of defense against hunger, which we've heard resoundingly across this panel, um, if that were to you know, experience any cuts, there is no way that the only other system in place to supplement that would even have the capacity to meet those needs. The emergency food system was just never designed to do that. We were you know, designed to provide people with, as Rachel has explained, it is the busiest time of any month, the end of the month, because that's when people are running out. So we supplement by trying to provide three days worth of food um, while people have run out of their SNAP. And trust me, people even run out of the SNAP and then they run out of the three-day uh, allotment that's provided to them. And that's what's happening with the resources as is. Uh, every, every year, we join a food bank with other food bank members across the city to travel to D.C., as Rachel has uh, said earlier um, in the testimony, and we advocate for increases. <laughs> we advocate for increases to, to what's already existing, and we are now trying to advocate for cuts, uh, against cuts of what's already existing. So that we advocate every year to try to increase what we already have and that we're experiencing threats to what we already have. I mean, we make the point over and over again when we argue for increases. So now we're making an even more, you know, urgent cry for why, you know, at the very least it, it must sustain the same, you know. Uh, we're just not designed to to do that. So it would be um, extremely devastating. I just want to say one more thing. Um, there's nothing... Um, more scary than a hungry human being. I mean, there's no telling <laughs> what can occur in the mind of a human being who needs to feed their children uh, or you know themselves and they can't find food. People are willing to do anything to put food on the table. And crime would just increase. Um, it would be a madhouse out there in the streets. I just don't, my heart is pounding imagining what this world would look like without SNAP. And so that's my fear and my concern that, you know, we need to save this program, period. Thank you. Thank you so much to this panel. Thank you. <clears throat> One more panel. Uh, Natasha McRae, Hunger Free America. Barbara Hart, Hunger Free America. Uh, uh, Jessica... So he's Madrade, right? Houston Mandrade. 
And then Danette uh, Rivera. From oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, got it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I had him. I had him. Daniel Reyes. Sorry. Whoever wants to begin. Good morning. Thank you to the, to the City Council, especially Speaker Mark, uh, Melissa Mark Viverito and General Welfare Chair Steve Levin, for continuing to prioritize anti hunger programs, including three years of increases to EFAP, as well as the expansion of universal free school meals in nearly all NYC public schools. I want to thank the General Welfare Committee for holding this hearing on critical resolution on SNAP, for, which is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps. My name is Jessica Houston Andrade, and I am the Director of Benefits Access at the Metropolitan Council on Jewish Poverty. At our agency, nearly 6,000 clients rely on SNAP, and nearly 15,000 clients rely on our emer emergency food network each year to supply their families with meals. For more than four decades, Met Council has supported and championed families, seniors and adults living in poverty and near poverty. Met Council provides immediate assistance to New Yorkers in crisis and creates pathways to self-sufficiency through the following programs. America's largest kosher food pantry system, emergency social services, family violence services, home repairs, home care services, benefits enrollment and outreach, and affordable housing. Our grassroots Jewish Community Council network provides support to families in their neighborhoods right where they live. As the first line of defense against hunger, we recognize the critical impact that SNAP has in lifting people out of poverty and aiding them on their path to self-sufficiency. The proposed cuts under the current administration, more than $193 billion over 10 years, would put the children, seniors, and families that we serve into extreme poverty. Unfortunately, New York City's Emergency Food Network cannot shoulder these additional cuts alone. In 2013, New York City witnessed an 80% increase in visitors and a 60% shortage on food, according to the Food Bank for New York City, with the sunset of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. The $193 billion cuts proposed in the White House budget loom much larger than those we have already experienced to date. These cuts significantly impact those who rely on SNAP to put food on the table. We must work together to fight any and all proposed cuts to SNAP to ensure a strong safety net that can respond when New Yorkers fall on hard times. Once again, I want to thank you for introducing this resolution. We look forward to working with you to protect SNAP and to help New Yorkers. I'd be happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Natasha McCray, and I'm here on behalf of Hunger Free America, and I'm also a SNAP recipient. I have been a member of the Food Action Board of Hunger Free America since 2011. I have a 13-year-old and a two-year-old child, and a few months ago, not even a few, oh, a year ago, my SNAP benefits were rescinded, and I went almost three months without food stamps. SNAP benefits, and it was the hardest time of my life, being pregnant and having a child who was in school at the same time. So these benefits, if they're cut, are devastating to not only my family, but to my friends and my community. I live in the Bronx, which is the nation's poorest borough. So with cuts to SNAP benefits, it's a huge devastation to our economic abilities to be able to provide for our families. So we implore you and we thank you for benefiting and helping to make sure that this cuts don't go through because it is a necessity for people like myself and people in my community. With Hurricane Harvey, 
all over the world with all of these different destructions that are happening. The need for SNAP, the need for programs such as this to be able to help people in emergencies is even more dire. So I implore you to make sure that this particular program continues. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Daniel Reyes. I'm the Deputy Executive Director at the New York Common Pantry, which has locations in East Harlem, Mott Haven, Longwood, and Hunts Point, and where we serve New Yorkers from across the city. Thank you to the City Council, especially Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito and General Welfare Chair Steve Levin for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of the thousands of families that the New York Common Pantry serves across New York City. At the New York Common Pantry, our strategy is to alleviate food insecurity through access to healthy food, wellness, nutrition, education, and the acquisition and management of resources. The third part, the acquisition of resources like SNAP are vital to giving families the opportunity to reach a level of stasis and dignity where they are not in a position of having to decide whether dinner is served tonight or the rent gets paid. We are grateful that the City Council continues to prioritize anti-hunger programs, including three years of increases to the Emergency Food Assistance Program, as well as expansion of uni universal free lunch in nearly all of New York City public schools. At the New York Common Pantry last fiscal year, we served over six million meals to thousands of households. Approximately 90% of those households rely on both SNAP and food pantries to, to supply their families with meals. New York Common Pantry continues to extend its reach across the city to ensure that no family or individual goes hungry, but we cannot do this alone. The most sustainable and strategic tool we have is SNAP. It is the first line of defense against food insecurity for 1.7 million people in New York City, and it must be protected at all costs. We must work together to fight any and all proposed cuts to SNAP and ensure the program is protected so individuals struggling with food insecurity can continue to rely on it. In our 37 years of existence, the New York Common Pantry and our families have weathered many economic and political storms, but $193 billion in proposed budget cuts to SNAP over 10 years would be devastating all around. For the families and ind individuals who will lose some, if not all, of this vital resource, for the emergency feeding network in the city that would struggle greatly to meet the demand as families lose resources, and for local economies that would lose a key part of the, social, of the economic engine that fuels them. This resolution needs to send a loud and clear message. Leave SNAP alone. I want to thank the City Council for introducing this resolution, and we continue to, we continue to look forward to working with you on this important matter. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hello. Hi. Okay. My name is Barbara Hart, and I'm a member of um, Hunger Free America. And I would like to say um, God bless everybody who attended today, and I'm grateful to be on the panel um, to talk about the SNAP benefits. Um, I'm, I'm a mother of seven, but only three children live with me and my grandson. And my um, SNAP benefits has been cut, raised, cut, raised, and um due to my um, son, my youngest son, um, getting a job, and then he lost the job, and then he was on unemployment. And, that, you know, as things change in your composition, you have to let them know. So um, it will be devastating. Like some of the people said on the panel before me, um, can you imagine, like, when they had the blackout and everybody was going to the stores and stealing and acting crazy? Well, if you don't have no food, that could happen again without the lights even going off, right? And so um, I'm grateful to be a part of Hunger for Free America. And somebody else said on the panel about going to the legislation, I did that. Going to, um, to Capitol Hill, I did that. And I'm going to continue to do that. Anything, that got anything to do with anything that's negative, I'm going to be a part of. And I want to also say the last thing is no more cuts, no more cuts, no more cuts. Thank you. And thank you. This, thank you very much to this panel um, and for you know bring and the previous panel for bringing this issue into such clear such a clear picture. Um, the the um, the word that stuck out for me in hearing uh, these two panels' testimony devastation. That's what would happen. It be it would be devastation. It would be devastating to families. It would be devastating to communities. Um, it would be devastating to our economy here in New York City. Um, and 
these are the types of things that we need to stand up against. And uh, we so greatly appreciate you are doing this um, and taking on um, this civic responsibility. Um, you know, there are times, you know, we are presented with different challenges, uh, you know, uh, at times. And so, um, you know, after 9-11, the city was, had was presented with challenges and we had to, to, to rebuild the city. And uh, after the economic uh, crisis that was precipitated by, um, you know, unscrupulous and irresponsible um, banking practices and real estate practices, um, and then when the, the bottom fell out of the economy, we were presented with, with challenges. Um, today, we have an administration in, in Washington uh, that um, is aiming to dismantle everything that we've worked for for generations uh, to build up and helping uh, New Yorkers that need help and Americans that need help. And so that's our challenge now is to, is to make sure that we are uh, uh, firmly and uh, conscientiously um, saying no and, uh, and saying not, not going to happen on our watch. We're not going to go along with this. And so I want to thank you for taking on that responsibility of testifying here today, of organizing um, in your communities, uh, taking on the responsibility of being on the board of Hunger Free America. Um, uh, uh, so I, I, I just want to thank you very much for being here today and for taking on that, this, this challenge. Um, this resolution is going to be a part of the response to that. It's not the entire response, and so um, we need to keep on fighting. Um, so this is an important thing we're doing today, um, but it is, it is one step in a, in a longer struggle. So I want to thank you very much, though. Thank you for your testimony. Thanks. Um, so here now at 11.07 uh, a.m., um, since we already had the vote, uh, we will uh, we'll be closing this hearing. Thank you again to everybody that came to testify. I will look forward to um, uh, passing this resolution at the stated meeting tomorrow. Thank you. This hearing is closed.